What's going on everybody? Jay Howe here. And in this video I'm going to bring you another Diablo 3 build. And in this one we're going to go over the Crusader and the Roland set which had a huge change in patch 2.2 and is now extremely powerful and very viable and kind of making a replacement for the Akan set and kind of taking this to the next step. I'm going to go ahead and cover the skills, the gear, and everything you need to know for the build and a lot that you can do with the build to make this work for you. So to cover the skills, I'm going to hit those real quick, and I'm going to give you some other options you can run with. The best part about this is there's a lot of diversity as far as what you can do to fit your specific play style, or maybe something isn't quite working for you. And I'm going to go over a couple of those options that you can use. Now to hit the skills real quick, Shield Glare with Zealous Glare, Shield Bash with Crumble, Iron Skin with Steel Skin, Punish with Fury, Laws of Justice with Decaying Strength, Akarat's Champion with Profit, and for your passives, Towering Shield, Heavenly Strength, Indestructible, and Finery. Now, Shield Glare is pretty much a necessity here. You're not going to be using any type of Wrath Builder except for skills like this with Shield Glare and Zealous Glare. Now, this is going to work great, and this does a lot for you. This blinds enemies up to 30 yards in front of you for four seconds and this is really nice and I'm going to go over some of the, the mechanics with the Roland set so you got an idea on how this works. I'll show you a little bit of gameplay at the end as well so you can see just how effective it is. With Shield Glare here blinding enemies is huge especially for four seconds and the best part about you know the Roland set is that you're gonna have this on cooldown very very rapidly. It says 12 seconds but it's gonna be coming around much much quicker than that Zealous Glare, gain 9 Wrath for each blinded enemy. That's huge because that's going to be where your main Wrath generator is going to be coming from. And that's going to keep you afloat to be able to move through here and to be able to run other skills without having to have any type of generator there. Shield Bash with Crumble. This is your main attack. You're going to be spamming this quite a bit. Foes who are killed explode, dealing 660% weapon damage is fired to enemies behind them and knocking those enemies back. So obviously hitting something and killing it is going to be good because you're going to be doing more damage as it goes through and it's going to splash through and deal more damage and fire is working really nice here. Now here's a couple of other options we'll get to in a second. Iron skin with steel skin. This is really nice and, and this is one of those things especially if you're running greater rifts you pretty much need. This increases your iron skin up to 7 seconds which absorbs 50% of all incoming damage for 4 now 7 seconds and that's huge especially the fact that it's on a 30 second cooldown and again the mechanics of Roland's is going to make this much much better and come around much quicker and you'll be able to keep that up very very like for the for the most part uh, during your rifting adventures so Here's where things can change a little bit differently. Now I'm running with Punish with Fury. Now you're going to see on the rune here, when you block with Hardened Senses active, you gain 15% increased crit hit chance. Now every time you, you pop Punish here, you're going, to or you're going to gain Hardened Senses, and that's where that's going to come in. So that increases your block chance by 15% for 5 seconds. So whenever that's up, and when you block with Hardened Senses active, which should be fairly frequently, you're going to be able to get that 15% crit hit chance. That's strictly for damage. Now, if you find that you're having trouble with Shield Glare and Zealous Glare, you can go another direction. Or if you kind of like going a little bit differently, Provoke is nice as well. It taunts all nearby enemies and instantly generate an additional 5 wrath for every enemy taunted. So the taunted enemies are going to focus their attention on you. And you can run it with something like Hit Me. And this gives you 50% increased block chance for 4 seconds after casting Provoke. So that's nice in the, in the sense that you can use this to also mitigate damage. So twofold you're going to get extra wrath plus you're going to be able to have 50% increased block chance which is a bit higher than what you're going to get from uh, Punish with Fury in the sense that you're only going to get 15% increased block chance as opposed to 50. However, you're going to be able to do more damage. If you do find that you're having trouble with survivability, you might want to go with Provoke over there and run it with Hit Me to be able to have a little bit more survivability because you're going to be able to keep that up. And that's on a 20 second cooldown where uh, Punish you can pretty much spam as needed. But like I said, with the mechanics of Roland, you'll be able to keep uh, the uh, the provoke up quite a bit so keep that in mind don't worry too much about the 20 seconds there 
Now here's another option that you can go with to kind of change stuff up. I'm running with Laws of Justice, and this is where more of my damage mitigation is coming in to allow me to get that extra 15% crit hit uh, chance as opposed to running with something like Laws of Valor with the extra attack speed. Although you can go either direction there, and I'll show you that here in a second. Laws of Justice, while it's uh, the passive, recite the law granting you and your allies 140% increased resistances to all. And when you, when you pop this, you get 490 increased resistances which you'll have this around quite a bit too. 30 seconds is nice, but it's gonna come around much quicker. Now, decaying strength, and this is one of those things that if you're in greater rifts, this might be a direction you go. Again, you can change these up to fit your play style and your survivability. While the law is empowered, enemy, any enemy who attacks you or your allies have their damage reduced by 15% for five seconds, stacking up to a maximum of 60%. So that's pretty nice in that it's going to act as a damage mitigator solely because you're going to get the extra increased all resist, which is huge, especially when you can activate this uh, a little bit more frequently. Plus, it's also going to make the, the enemies hitting you do less damage as well. Now, if you want to go old school, you can go with Laws of Valor, attack speed. If you're managing your wrath well and you're using shield glare well and you've got all the proper gear in place, you could run with this to get the extra increased attack speed and you can run with any number of directions you want to go here. Uh, you can go with critical here. Empowering the law also increases your crit hit damage by 100%. So you can do that to be able to get damage that way. Again, it's going to depend on how you want to go. Do you want damage mitigation or do you want the extra damage period? How are you running? Are you running punish or are you running provoke? So that's going to be up to you as far as what fits you the best. Akarat's Champion with Profit. This is one. Gain 150% additional armor while Akarat's Champion is active. And Akarat's Champion increases your damage by 35% and increasing your Wrath Regeneration by 5 for 20 seconds. So that's a nice thing to have there. And I'm going to show you a couple options you can go with with your gear to be able to get this around a little bit quicker. Obviously a 90 second cooldown. Having a little bit of cooldown reduction will help keep that up. That's very important to run with. Uh, when you're, Especially when you're running Greater Rifts. The extra damage... Uh, plus the damage mitigation goes a long way. Passives Towering Shield is a no-brainer. Increase the damage of your Shield Bash by 20%, and it reduces the cooldown of Shield Glare, which is back here. Like I said, you're going to find ways to keep this up almost permanently, uh, so it's a nice thing to have there, especially if you're in large groups. So keep that in mind. Heavenly Strength, this gives you the option to wield a two-handed weapon, which is very nice. Your damage total is reduced, but having that two-handed weapon there more than makes up for it. Indestructible, especially if you're running Greater Rifts, this is your extra life. When you receive Fatal Damage, you instead become immune to damage. And this way it allows you to have an extra life every 60 seconds. And then Finery, gaining 1.5% strength for every gem socketed into your gear. So that's very important when you are gemming your gear. So that's the skills as far as some of the, the options you can run with. A couple things that you could probably run differently there. But for the most part, Shield Bash is going to be where most of your damage is coming from, or all of your damage. Shield Glare is nice to have there because that's going to keep you your Wrath up, plus it's going to act as a crowd control. Uh, and then Iron Skin, which is a damage mitigator. So as you can see, there's a couple options you can go with there uh, to do things a little bit differently. Now, for the gear, it's going to be very dependent, obviously, on Rollins. And then I'm going to show you a couple options you can go with as far as what might fit you a little better. Uh, so what you can do... Now, Rollins, you can run full six-piece. However, on this particular build, I'm running five pieces with the boots, pants, gloves, shoulders, and helmet. And then I'm running that with the Ring of Royal Grandeur so I can hit that six-piece bonus. Now, let's go over the Rollins here. Every use of Shield Bash and Sweep Attack reduces the cooldown of your laws and defensive skills by one second. And that's what I was going over here. Things like your Shield Glare, your Laws of Justice, things like that are going to come around much, much quicker with that two-piece bonus. So you can rely on this pretty heavily. And it it kind of goes on further here. Now let's look at this a little bit further. The four-piece. The four-piece bonus increases the damage of Shield Bash and Sweep Attack by 500%. So now you, you can use that Shield Bash, and it's going to do a ton more damage that way. Now moving on to the six-piece bonus. This is where you know things start to get a little bit more interesting and kind of go full circle with the set altogether. Every use of Shield Bash or Sweep Attack that hits an enemy grants 30% increased attack speed for 3 seconds. This stacks up to 5 times. That's huge because you're going to be hitting rather slowly with a two-hander. And you're going to see that it's not the fastest of attacks. 
the minute you start hitting stuff and stacking that up, you're going to be able to maintain your wrath between Shield Glare and Zealous Glare and just do everything you need to be doing and to be able to keep that up and keeping that at the five stacks, you're going to be hitting huge numbers very, very quickly, which ties back into the two-piece bonus, every use of Shield Bash. So now you're attacking at a much faster pace, which is helping to, to benefit that two-piece bonus to help your defensive skills come around uh, to be able to keep that up. You know, permanently is a little tough when you're moving in between mobs, but it's nice and easy to get back because as you attack more, each next attack comes back around a little quicker as that stacks up to where you get the full five stacks. So that's a very important thing to keep in mind with the Rollins and why a lot of this is going to roll together and it can help you make a decision as far as how you're going to choose your skill. So keep that in mind when you're looking at the Rollins. Now, because I am using a fire build, I'm running with a cinder coat here. And you can actually go two different directions as far as how you want to gear. Now, you can easily put the Roland's chest piece on here. And that way you have full six pieces and get rid of the Ring of Royal Grandeur. Grandeur and run something like a Stone of Jordan that has fire skill damage strength. And, of course, the uh, elite damage. And that's one way to go in terms of how you want to do that. Your other one is going to be the unity for your ring for the obvious reasons to stay alive. So you can keep that in mind. Uh, you can do other things there however you see fit. But if you still wanted to go with a five-piece bonus and keep your ring of royal grand drawn, another thing you could do is run a Laorix crown. You can also run this. It increases the effect of any gem socket into this. This is where you would have a diamond in there to be able to increase your cooldown reduction, which will mainly play into your Akarat's champion. Because that's such a huge increase, that extra 35% damage, plus the wrath regeneration, plus the armor, that's not a bad thing to go for. Uh, you're obviously not going to stack high enough cooldown reduction like you did uh, with previous builds, but it is something to shoot for if you want to be able to keep that around quite a bit. So keep that in mind. Uh, a couple things that I've other, seen other people running as well, because sometimes you're going to have quite a few monsters on you, especially if you maybe change a skill or two up, uh, the illusory boots to be able to get out, those don't necessarily benefit you as much in the way of sheer damage, but they benefit in a, in a lot of ways in terms of crowd control and uh, survivability and uh, being able to maneuver and function there as well. Now, one very important item to keep in mind here is the shield, uh, the Pyro Morella. Uh, however, that said, this is actually really neat because you can actually walk right over here and run in, and should you have the plan, which hopefully you do by now, it's actually a craftable item. And this is very important for the build for many reasons, but most importantly, obviously, the secondary there. Reduces the wrath cost of shield bash, and that can range anywhere between 40 and 50%. The good thing is you can continue to roll this however you want uh, until, say, maybe you get an Ancient one. But being able to have Shield Bash damage, crit hit chance, and your main stat on there is good. If you don't want Vitality and you want to be able to roll cooldown reduction on there, that's another way to go. However, this is fitting my playstyle and how I want to do this. So keep that in mind. This shield is very, very vital. And it's easy because you can run right over and craft it. Now... For weapons, a furnace is going to go a long way, as you can keep that in mind. Obviously, the secondary there increases the damage against elites by anywhere between 40 to 50 percent. is very important, so if you have a furnace, great. If not, and you have something like a Maximus, which this is a pretty strong Maximus that I have here, you can run something like this since it is a fire skill build, and that's going to serve you very well. Another item, and this is uh, you know something quite different here, uh, the Blood Brother grants a 17 percent chance to block attacks. Blocked attacks inflict 30% less damage. And after blocking an attack, your next attack inflicts 30% additional damage. So this could actually be a nice substitute as well. If you don't have any of those, you can run any other two-hander there uh, to be able to make use of the passive and uh, be able to take advantage of that until you get one of those items and uh, run those accordingly. Um, now, for your gear, as far, your as far as how you're gearing, having cooldown reduction is going to be beneficial. Keep in mind that you do need to have a, a decent balance between cooldown reduction and your survivability. But having cooldown reduction on places like your shoulders and your gloves isn't too bad. I just happen to have it on my furnace as well here, so keep that in mind. Also, on your boots and your helmet, uh, you can choose to roll shield bash there. Obviously, if you could get uh, crit chance on there as well, that might be better. Rolling crit chance over shield bash might actually be better. Uh, my crit chance is at 48%, plus I'm using punish, so I'm, I'm okay with keeping shield bash there, although you can go another direction as well. 
Now, if you have a Witching Hour Great, that's going to increase your damage. And one of the things that people have been running, and I don't have a Strength one, I think I salvaged it at some point, but a Strength one is also nice to have. And you're going to see in the secondary there, it's always going to roll. Reduces damage from melee attacks, and this one's 30%. So, you know, that's really nice to have there. Obviously, this is an Intelligence one, so I'm not going to equip this. But having that in there, because you're going to be in there in melee range, taking a lot of damage. And that's why a lot of the damage mitigators are going to come into play there. If you have a String of Ears, you can run that. If not, a Witching Hour will serve you well, so keep that in mind. Uh, there's a couple other of directions you can go there. Now, to the Bracers. This is a new item uh, in 2.2, so keep that in mind that if you haven't got one yet, uh, this is new. Uh, the Dracon's Lesson, and you're going to see there in the secondary. When your Shield Bash hits three or less enemies, its damage is increased anywhere between 150 to 200%. And 25% of its wrath cost is refunded. So that's really nice. This really kind of helps you out in that single target damage when you're fighting a greater rift boss. Where melee doesn't always have the greatest you know, luck there. Or the skill just doesn't quite add up in terms of like speed. There's a lot of different reasons why this is here. Uh, even those yellow elites that tend to be stragglers. So you're not always going to focus on those, but this gives you the option, the yellow guys I should say, but this gives you the option to say, hey, you know, at least I'm doing a little bit more damage while I'm in there. Now having fire skill damage, crit chance, strength, and vitality is pretty nice, so you can keep that in mind. Now for your amulet, if you have a damage mitigating amulet, such as a Countess Julia's, uh, a Zephyrian amulet, any number of those that, that mitigate some type of damage is good. Else, any other amulet's going to fit you well. A Hellfire amulet can go a good ways there as well. So keep that in mind when you are gearing that up. For your Paragon points, maxing your movement speed in conjunction with your gear and then going into strength after that. Offense, having nice cooldown reduction will help you out immensely here. Crit damage, crit chance, and attack speed are all very nice. Resist all, armor, life, and then life regen. And utility. Now, again, depending on how you're balancing your wrath, you might want to go resource cost reduction first. You might want to go area damage first. Uh, they're all fairly important, but it's going to depend, especially if you don't have very high Paragon points. You're going to have to decide which one fits you better. If you want more damage, obviously area damage. If you're having trouble with resource cost reduction, keep that in there. Or if you need a little bit more survivability, go with life on hit. Or if you're just starving for gold, go gold find. That's it, guys. That is the build. That is some of the options you can run with and the gear. If you like the build, if you like the video so far, be sure and hit that like button because that is always appreciated. If you're cutting off here, I appreciate you guys watching as always. I'm going to go ahead and show you guys a little bit of gameplay so you can see this in action and be able to see how some of these skills work together. And so you got an idea on, hey, am I going to run the Crusader or how can I run this Crusader? So let's get into that. So one of the things I want to keep in mind, I'm just going to run in here real quick, um, is to keep in mind is you can actually see that, and this is where illusory boots, I'm actually going to go ahead and angle this, but you're going to see I'm able to blind stuff, but there the minute I start using Rollins, and you can see like big, big crit numbers there. The minute I start using Rollins is the minute you saw all of my gear coming down, so... You can see big crits coming out. There was a 1 billion crit in there, and that helps. And I, I meant to go over the uh, the legendary gems. A Taeguk is nice. Keep in mind, a Taeguk, you do have to stay moving. You do have to stay active. Um, a Bane of the Trapped is going to be really good to run with because you're going to be in there. Uh, control impairing effects such as your, your uh, shield glare is going to be in there. So having those different things in there is going to be huge. Um, but I'm, there's a pack of elites right here. Let's hit those real quick. You're going to see I'm going to shield glare them. They're actually going to come to me anyways. Uh, the minute I start using that, you can see every time I'm using um, every time I'm using Shield Bash, you can see the cooldowns come on that, and you can see that I'm just actually just destroying these things. That one billion crit was done without ever using uh, Akarat's Champion there, but you can pretty much walk around and uh, one shot everything. Obviously, having a, a little bit of things in place going for you is going to help quite a bit. Uh, I don't have any uh, bracers on me, but you can see that as I pop these. Uh, you can see the cooldowns on them, and if you watch them down here, you don't necessarily have to hit anything, but you can see the cooldowns come. But the, the, the more I'm hitting something, the better off I'm going to be. And you can see that when you target an enemy, you're actually going to vault, or I guess shoot towards them, charge towards them. But that drops off, so that's going to be important. And you can see that, well, 
as I one-shot everything there. That's why I said sometimes showing it on T6 is a little bit harder. I'll do some gameplay and some greater riffs for you guys in another video. That takes a little bit more time to uh, put together. Uh, but you can see that every time I use that, you can see my laws of justice come around. You can see everything pretty much come around as I shoot around here. And this is the thing, like when you're in T6, you can kind of shoot around. But if you're in a greater rift and being able to have, see I've already got the shield glare back and you can see that I'm just permanently blinding everything here. Having that there, and that's huge in a greater rift. So keep that in mind when you're doing that. Being able to stack up your uh, Rollins, being able to keep your Taguk up. The other thing is, now you can go two different directions here. And the third uh, gem that you probably are going to need, and I don't have a gem socket to put that in there, is either an Esoteric Alteration or a Molten Wildebeest. Now the reason I say a Molten Wildebeest is because if you're running something like Laws of Justice and you're being able to keep your all resistances up, by uh, proccing that, you can see your toughness go up and your all resistances go up. You might not necessarily need esoteric alteration because this gives you 28.5% non-physical damage reduction. So having that in there might actually benefit you in the sense that you can run with something like Molten Wildebeest, which is going to regenerate a lot of health for you, especially when you're in there taking damage. Once you have that leveled up, it's actually really, really nice to run with. So you can base that around what skills that you went with, so you can keep that in mind as well. But here you're going to see there was a 1.3 billion crit in there. Uh, but as you can see, I couldn't even get five uh, hits off. But like I said, I, I'll get some, uh, some uh, Greater Rift gameplay for you guys together uh, so you can see that in action. But as you can see, it's quite potent quite effective and if you're trying to push more damage you most certainly can hopefully you have better rings than I do uh, you could run with something like a stone of Jordan like I said if you're if you're trying to run a full six piece bonus so you can kind of pick and choose how you want to run that um, again there's a little bit of flexibility which goes a long way but being able to charge uh, being able to have your shield glare back permanently uh, your iron skin is going to come back very very frequently when there's high density and uh, you're hitting a lot of things, you're going to have your Laws of Justice and your Iron Skin up um, quite often. And so you can keep that in mind when you're running that. Of course, Punish doesn't cost anything, so you can kind of spam that as needed. It's every five seconds. Uh, unfortunately, that doesn't show up uh, anywhere um, down here, so uh, you got to just kind of keep an eye on that. Just kind of spam that as needed. That's it, guys. That's the build. That's the gear. And uh, that's everything you need to know for the uh, Roland set. Now, if you've made it this far and you're questioning, hey, there's a new flail out there, yes, there is another build based around sweep attack, which I'll bring to you at a later time once I get that flail. So uh, thank you guys for watching so far. Uh, if you're looking for more Diablo builds or more Diablo content and you're not subscribed already, uh, you can do that as well. I'm going to be doing a lot more in the future uh, around all patches, all builds, and uh, even some more gameplay and stuff for you guys, all things Diablo related. So if you want to subscribe, be sure and do that now. Like I said, if you did like the video or if you liked the build, uh, be sure and hit that like button below because that is always appreciated. As always, I appreciate you guys watching. Till next time, happy hunting. See you again.